very good morning everyone welcome to the 17th session we are conducting on current affairs first 10 sessions almost we were doing on science and tech after that we started doing economy this may be one of the most important session from exam perspective why so consistently there has been question being asked from external sector what are topics we are going to discuss today basically the exchange rate or near rear concept then convertibility then all those currently relevant where xyz terms that is in is like nostro account vostro account all of these things let's get started <coughs> so before this is not exactly a part of external sector this is a part of monetary policy but we missed out this so that's why we are doing it right here what is this long term repo operations ltro RBI has recently started doing this long term repo operations. Tell me what is repo operations? RBI lends money to bank and take back government securities. This is repo operation. It's not may not be overnight basis, like short term it is. There are till 1 to 28 days, different options are there. MSF will come for 28 variant also. So within this much range, RBI do the short term variation, bank to have to manage the short term liquidity, that is why we do repo rate. And this is our benchmark policy rate, it is collaborated to all other XYZ rates. Now, our, what is long term repo rate, there is only one change, what is it? This 28 days changes to 1 to 3 year, that is the term of this repo operation change made long term, rest all other whatever is happening that is kept constant. Ecuber and all these some limits are there you don't need to go too much into it the normal repo operation is 3 to 28 days if the maturity of this XYZ repo operations increase to 1 to 3 years that we call it as long term repo operations why RBI is doing this Yes, same purpose, eh? RBA has to promote long term lending. We have discussed this in Operation Twist. Operation Twist, how was it operating? It was trying to calibrate the interest rate in the market by changing the bond yield. It was trying to pull down the bond yield of long term bonds and so that there will be corresponding change in the interest rate in the market. Here what they are doing is they are selling the if long term repo is available for banks at repo rate 1 to 3 year whatever it is whatever the 1 to 3 year lending rates will fall if 1 to 3 year lending rates will fall means bond yields is correspondingly related to it it will also fall this is an example of expansionary monetary policy what does it mean objective is to fall the interest rate in the market. RBI is keeping this interest rate in the market like when inflation or when pandemic came. RBI's objective was making the interest rate in the market fall. And what RBI done? Repo rate kitna niche ja sakte ho, niche gaya. But banks were not transmitting this, transmissibility was less. So our issues were in this. To then this operation twist came. Now this is also another operation with same objective. Here directly the fund is made available to banks at repo rate. That means banks are getting low interest rate funds for long term operations. So that the long term rent will interest will again fall down. Long term 1 to 3 year bond yield will again fall down. So this will pick up the investment rate. The objective are all same. And conceptually if any question comes you only have to keep one thing in mind. Its maturity is 1 to 3 year rest. Everything is what report us. What is MSF? What is the difference between MSF and repo rate? Here you can take the collateral from SDR. SLR. Statutory liquidity ratio, 
government has to maintain this much of 18 percent around 18 percent has to be maintained in liquid assets liquid assets can be in cash gold and this government securities and all these government securities are deposited with cbi rbi and banks are taking the loan that loan is called msf what is sdf sdf is not discretion of what is reverse repo if there is excess liquidity in the market banks are keeping this money with the rbi and taking back the government securities now banks are keeping the excess money with the market and not taking the government security that is sdf this is also a new policy tool what is policy corridor difference between msf and sdf pehle it was difference between msf and reverse repo right now the policy corridor is as msf and sdf here long term repo means only the maturity changes go ahead now we start our discussion on external sector what is balance of payment not two countries if a country is the how much is going out how much is going in of all xyz transactions this combined record of all this we call it as in one as xyz time we call it as balance of payment all transaction means kya kya ho sakta hai what can be the components of bop it can be trade current related account and capital related how you differentiate whether a one fund is current fund and or the capital fund how you differentiate this bop components are next slide we will go bop components are current account and capital account how you differentiate whether one transaction is you will classify it as capital or current account the idea is if anything that is going into current account there is no liability created on xyz government or any other entity no liability means this one need not be returned back if you look at this here it is fdi fdis may come future and take back this loan fpi is whenever there is a slight interest rate change interest rate change they take out their money fiis fpis and all external commercial borrowings it's a like a loan you have to repay it everything like a government borrowings bilateral loans everything after maybe 10 year 20 year or after long term you have to repay this money there is a concept of repay concept of repaying is that then that all transaction go into capital account if no repay has to be done then all those transaction come in current account example the trade transactions like if a commodity is gold is given and money is taken then that transaction is finished you don't need to return this money in future or no and such concept that's why remittances remittances are like people non resident indians they are sending money to their home and all so this money is sending to their home means they do they are sending this money for the expenditure at the home or something like that this money need not be returned back to the nris or people staying outside india so these remittances gifts grants all these go under current account itself clear now fa upsc question come which of this come under current account capital account way of thinking should be whether there is a need for repay only this you need to think rest you will make out in the examination now you can see some fdi is in days having why in days consistently having a current account deficit 1.2% of gdp is the latest current account deficit in 2022 in this year it is again getting increased and why if, even after having a consistent current account deficit in days not facing any bop crisis i am not asking why cad despite india having this cad consistently for years why india is not facing any balance of payment crisis what is bop crisis the xyz country doesn't have enough money to carry out the basic transaction to get the essentials like to buy crude oil to get energy inputs all this basic transaction it doesn't have the money or doesn't have the enough dollars then country going to 
BOP crisis. India go into the situation in 1991. India had loans. India doesn't have money to repay these loans. Sri Lanka gone into this situation in the recent past. Pakistan is somewhere around this crisis. Now, why India is, after, despite having a high current of current account deficit, India is not having any BOP crisis. If you look at India's forex results, recently it is falling, but if you look at last 10 years, it is highly increasing. Why this is happening? Because here, even though there is negative, India is gaining huge in FDI and FPI. This year, FPI, there is a negative connotation, like this much to 1.2 lakh crore money gone out of India. But if you again look at a long term value, FPIs are highly investing in India. Same goes with FDI. This year we got much higher, 84.8 billion FDI investments we are getting into India. So that's why we dollar is, even though India having current account deficit, huge amount of dollar is coming through other aspects into the economy. That's why despite current account India in current account deficit India can have huge forex reserves and India is never facing any situation nearby of this balance of payment crisis remittances is also in a component having 89 billion per year this year it is you are saying again increasing to 100 billion go ahead clear now this is the basic current account deficit data Currently, it is somewhere near these figures, 36.36.3 US billion US dollars. Now, for a short period of time, we entertain the positive CAD. Billion dollars, right? For a short period of time, we had this positive current current account surplus. Where it was? During the pandemic time, the imports were highly shrinked and export were also shrinked, but the level of import shrink was much higher. Even the crude oil demand was low and crude oil prices was also extremely low. So all these factors resulted in a short period of current account surplus. If a question comes like in last 10 years, India never had any phase of current account surplus, that is a absolutely wrong statement. India does had a small period. Even before also in 2000s, during before, before the subprime crisis, crisis of 2008, India had certain periods of this positive current account surplus period. Go ahead. What are major items of India import and export? Questions have been framed from these also. That's why even though this is a hardcore factual stuff, still you have to get, have a fair idea of this. What is India most important item? Obviously it is crude oil. 80, around 85% of India's crude oil demand is met by imports from other countries. So crude oil is the most gold, is the petroleum products. You don't need to remember everything, but you should have a fair idea. Vegetable oil is an agricultural product, also one of the most important item. Computer variable, plastic, raw materials, organic chemicals, coal, all this. India is still importing coal. There has been question framed on this also. There was statement like recently India become coal, India stopped importing coal, India have become self-sufficient in coal. But that statement is absolutely wrong. Why India is still importing coal despite having huge reserves? Because Two reasons are there. One is India doesn't have enough coking coal. Coking coal means that is high quality coal, have more than 90% of the carbon. This much of coal, India is not having enough to meet the demands of India's iron and steel industry. Yeah, this cooking coal India does need to import because of lack of supply. Second, there is, if you look at the coal mining industry, all these are controlled by CIL. CIL is having absolute majority or absolute near monopoly over this coal supply. Now, if one organization is having controlling the supply, there can be XYZ situations where this organization cannot meet the demand. So, India reaches many situation where CIL failed to meet the supply and this has to be supplemented by imports. Go ahead. Now what are export item? Very interestingly, the highest export item also petroleum products. What is the petro petroleum products? That means refined India, Indian companies refine this and sell it to other countries. 
and here we recently we talked in last class also windfall tax has been imposed on these companies what is windfall tax if any xyz sector or any xyz company is making catastrophic profit due to some xyz reason then government will impose a one time tax on those such a tax was imposed on companies who are exporting the petroleum products why because due to this russia ukraine crisis crude prices throughout the world have been high but what is happening in india india is getting discounted crude oil from russia so the what the private companies are doing they are refining it because india has huge refining capacity they are refining it and selling it abroad so this is they are making huge profit to have a check on this or to have a share of it government impose windfall tax on this then drugs and biological this was highly increased after the pandemic time generic drugs vaccines from india all are great in demand pearl and precious stones this is always demand from india diamond diamond processing around huge percent like more than 70% of diamond processing diamond cutting all this happen in india only iron and steel metal electric machinery chemicals gold silver all these are one agri products is uh, that is marine products agri or you can say primary product only one primary product is there that is a marine product here we have vegetable oils as in imports go ahead which are destination top destinations is usa uae china and all these countries are the top import destinations is china uae usa saudi arabia all these countries are there russia will also come into this sooner or later this is fy22 data okay go ahead now what is causing india trade deficit with the countries in china we are importing so much of electronics so much of toys so much of plastic components we are exporting from importing from china from middle east we are obviously importing natural gas crude oil all these products switzerland is a major import source for india's gold and luxury items similarly south korea we are importing mobile tv electronics and all these products taiwan also will come here taiwan also it is importing most of its electronic components similarly indian import is us indian this is like not import export not sources india's export countries or india's export products what india is exporting to usa india is exporting basically chemicals textile services textile is a very major source of export still from india most of many of the countries you will see that in britain netherlands like basically european countries india is exporting tea spices and textiles bangladesh nepal these countries india is exporting food medicine vehicles go ahead not required to buy heart all these just you should have an awareness so that a extreme statement you see you should be having striking that this statement can be wrong that much awareness you should get from this class of reading this material now what is net terms of trade wherever you see terms of trade you only have to think one thing export by import into 100 okay value of export by value of import into 100 what will be net terms of trade for india is it more than 100 or less than 100 for the we are doing less export and our imports are much higher so entity like denominator is much higher and numerator is smaller so our entity will be always less than less than 100 because we have country with huge cad go ahead economic country means what is the difference no no this is generally if nothing is given it is calculated with throughout all the countries specifically is given entity with respect to usa then you can think on that terms otherwise this is calculated based on whole exports from india and all imports from india go ahead answer this question first this is a 2020 prelims question
okay what is our approach to solving any kind of statement question find those statement that are 100 percent correct or 100 percent wrong read the first statement india's merchandise exports that means goods exports goods exports are less than it imports is it right or wrong good exports less the i absolutely correct we are already discussing this one is 100 percent correct so we cancel two options now india's import of iron and steel chemical fertilizer machinery have decreased in the recent years if you read the newspaper you might know otherwise you have confusion over it so put it on hold india's exports of services are more than its imports of services india is the export hub of services so export of services should be more this should be correct statement so three should be part of our answer so three is not here so we already got the answer without reading the fourth statement fourth statement is india suffers from overall trade or current account deficit how easy statement is this so we already got the answer even if you have confusion in this this statement is like you should be knowing about it even this is asked in 2020 so this small bulge during that pandemic time you can still overlook it go ahead very easy statement what mistake you can make here don't get confused with less more and all this stick with whatever basics you know don't overthink and complicate the statement very easy straightforward statements are being asked many of the economic question conceptually very strong question but statements are very easy or at least one statement will give, be given there like if you know that concept most of the options can be eliminated so even one very tough statement is there don't lose your sleep over it but the rest of the conceptually strong statement you should be able to identify eliminate and all this go ahead what is difference between fpi and fdi what is full form fpi is foreign portfolio investment and fdi is foreign direct investment yeah basically their difference is 10 percent of share value if a company is investing in less than 10 percent of share value of a xyz company then that is less hato fpi more hato more than 10 percent investment is done by xyz foreign company in an indian company then that we categorize as FDI. But what is the major functional difference? FPIs are only investing in the secondary market, mostly in the secondary market. Their only objective is when the share price rises, sell this and get, make money. Money is the only objective of this. If your company is getting FPI investment, its share price will increase. But none of these investors are going to interference, interfere in the XYZ matters of the company. No interference will be there from these investors. They are only looking at the share price and investing in the company. They are not going to interfere in day-to-day -day affairs or making any XYZ board meeting changes or any no such interference will be there for FPA investors. If FDA investor means more than 10% is there, more than 10% investment will be done. They will be bringing in their expertise into it. Maybe they will be bringing their tech into it. Maybe they will be bringing their management into it. They will interfere with the XYZ decisions of board, the board of directors decisions of the company. They will be sitting in the board of directors. So here the objective is take over the company, run the company. Here the objective is make the short term money, make more money in the short term. So this is like a short term, short term investment. This is like a more stable and long term investment. That's why any country will be more happy to get FDI than FPI. FPI money is also called hot money because, because it can flow in any direction. If something is happened, like Fed is, US Fed is increasing the interest rate, all these FPIs are running from the India. That's why we seen in the last slide that FPI in India last year is negative 1.2 lakh crore because 1.2 lakh crore rupees has flown from Indian market to the other countries. Why? Because Fed has increased the rate. Still Fed, whatever Fed is happening, FDI in India is considerably stronger. That FDI comes into a country because fundamentals are very strong, companies are very strong, there is huge market. These all things India have, that's because FDI is so much interested in India. FPI means it's vulnerable or volatile money. It's also called hot money. So it depends on the rates, market rates, all these small, small happenings that is happening in the XYZ part of the world. Go ahead. 
you can read this all these details are given here yes in government securities you should need to care fdis can invest in fdis or fps f fpis can invest in government securities fdis cannot everything but there is limits like up to 5% up to 10% in this only that much within that limits you can invest in the government securities but india is issuing government securities it means india is going to get to them yes india is giving debt to them like there was a concept like india's external debt is considerably lower less than 5% that number of value so to budget before government put up a proposal we should invest more in this we should buy more external borrowing government should take more external borrowing or external debt should increase now there was counter for that was what instead of if you are taking external borrowing means indian government is going there and taking the money so maybe india has to give more more interest rate because of this credit rating all these agencies creating issue credit rating there is already criticism that they are against indian system they are western biased so due to these credit agencies india might have to give more money so better option is open up more government securities for fpis so more money will they will come they will come here to invest so india doesn't has to bear that much of a cost for getting those money so this was a counter objective to it india is still not exaggerated india's external debt it is still under 5% range is only government debt we are talking about go ahead this is fdi it is technically called fpis but even you feel you look objective is the criteria 10% is like a, not exactly if you become 10.1 you became fpi not it's not seen in that aspect 10.1 is actually a rough figure if you are nine company invest 9% means 90% of the company is owned by external fpis but still it will be called in it will come in fpi investments only but the objective is more important this is not the this is like we make for making complex in the examination all otherwise the objective is important the fpis will be more interested in secondary market they will be directly buying the company and doing the business that kind of motive will be there in fdis so if you look at the fdis fpi outflows from india recently india witnessed this numbers are a little different 1.2 lakh crore after the consistent 3 years of incoming fpis we witness 1.2 lakh crore of outflow from india why this happened because of this taper tantrum effect similar to like because of fed is increasing the rates why fed is increasing us fed is increasing the rate one reason is like a pandemic happened the what throughout the government did throughout the government they followed an expansionary monetary policy expansionary monetary policy means money supply has been pushed to the limits interest rate has been kept as low as possible now due to all this due to all this inflation came in even we can see in the economics every class also like inflation in the advanced world is 8 to 10% 8 to 10% inflation means usually they have get a inflation of 1 to 2% that is mean four four times more than four to five times more than usual inflation india is only having 6.8% inflation this is our normal inflation 6% 5% is our normal 6.8 means slight increase is there. but us and all is facing extreme levels of inflation so there is inflation control needed so and there is there should be an end to the expansionary policy that has been following after the pandemic to both the reason us fed is increasing the rate so what happens when us fed increases the rate what happened when us fed increases the rate us fed increases the rate then what happened indian the investor investor will take the money from india and emerging economy riskier investment they take the money and they will put in the us bonds or us government securities because that is much safer investment earlier what they were doing 
when this US Fed rate was too low, they were taking money out of the US Fed. And this money has been invested in emerging economies. Yes, yes. Yes, what is the if so much of dollar is leaving India? So what happened? So much of dollar is leaving India means demand for dollar will demand for dollar will increase. Demand for dollar is increasing, dollar rupee rate is decided by demand and supply. If demand of dollar is increasing in Indian economy means Indian rupee will depreciate. Now Indian rupee will depreciate, what will happen? We are a country with huge amount of current account deficit. We are dependent on crude oil. So if you want to buy crude oil, you have to give more, more rupee. So the crude oil price, your imports become costlier. Import become costly. Import become costly means this get translated into all other sectors and India can face inflation. India can face. Paka. You are saying this every time Abhisa your Jaga and making Gilat in this. Okay. Overall the concept you understand. Then question can come from any of this. What will happen to bond yields? Tell me how you will think. If you want to think how US Fed increasing the rate. How will it, it will impact in bond, bond yields in India? But how Q bond yields will increase? This flow you understand. Now, what exactly is happening? Dollar is taken from India and going outside. So, money from even government securities or bonds are going outside. So, demand for bonds. Demand for government securities or bonds are decreasing. If demands are decreasing means bond prices, bond price will fall. Bond price will fall means bond yield will increase. Or you can think that if you are very sure that inflation happens, inflation happens, what RBI can do? Market interest, what happens? Market interest will increase. Market interest increasing, market interest and bond yield are always proportional. So, if market interest is increasing, bond yield should increase. Question can from, from any of these direction statement can be framed over. There. If you are conceptually clear, you should not get wrong whatever the statement comes. Go ahead. Anything else? Chale. Hot money we already discussed. Those money which have highly volatile and with slight disruption in the interest rate, it can flow to any of the economies. So that kind of money is hot money. Hard money, soft money, what is the difference? Hard money is easily convertible. Hard money means it is on depending on credibility. Here it was volatility was the deciding factor. Here it is credibility. Credibility, how you our currency acquires credibility? There is some limits to XYZ transactions. It will come, it will have some political backing, sovereign backing of those countries which are politically and economically stable. This backing is there, we call it as hard money. Otherwise, we call it as soft money. Go ahead. FDI is, we are consistently getting an FDI increase of above more than 50 billion US dollars in last three years. Baki concepts all what we have discussed now, right now. Which countries are majorly contributing to FDIs in India? Singapore is the highest contributor. After that, we have USA, Mauritius, Netherlands, Switzerland are the top five contributors. Which sectors is attracting FDIs? That is computer, software and hardware. Service sector, automobile sector and which states, if you look at, Karnataka is the highest state state with highest FDI inflows. After that, Maharashtra, Delhi, Tamil Nadu, Haryana, all these are there. Question can come at sometimes with yes. sectors. Which sector? 
are hardcore facts at least one top this is this much you should know so almost contributing 25 percent of india's all these are going to computer hard software and hardware sector go ahead yeah copy down this is data till fy22 this data you don't need to too much worry about maybe one country here and there change hoga uska zyada change nahi hoga sector will always remain the same all these data is fy22 data not the fy23 data because fy23 is not still over go ahead answer this question first How you answer this question? What is the toughness of this question? What gives toughness of this question? So many new concepts, your convertible bonds. What is convertible bonds? What is, this is still easy statement. What is global depositor receipts? So, so many interrelated concepts, if you know clearly, then only you can confidently answer this question. Otherwise, it's always going to be con confusing. Which of these followings are FDIs? That is the question. Foreign con currency convertible bonds. Usually, for bonds are, are debt. debt instruments. They are not a part of equity. They are not part of FDI. But convertible bond means this debt can be converted into equity. So, if it is converted into equity, it can be categorized as FDI. Only if it is part of equity, then we the concept of FDI comes. Otherwise, it is a part of debt only. Now, foreign institutional investors with certain conditions. This will also, this uh, depending on certain conditions, this will also be considered as FDS. Some XYZ percentage and other criteria are met. You can change your FPI into FDA also. One, two is correct. Global depositor receipts. What is they? Without registering to all of this, they are depositing their money into it. This obviously can be a part of FDI. They are investing in Indian company. They are in foreign people are investing in Indian company. Non-resident external deposit. These are purely debt instrument. This has no XYZ with equity connection. Yeah, yeah, purely debt instrument. Both should not be part of your answer. Both these are gone. One, two, three is correct statement. Answer is A. Quite tough question if you don't exactly know what all these components are. We'll discuss this later. We'll discuss this later. Go ahead. What is external debt overhanging problem? What is Lafarka? If you increase the tax rate there will be a corresponding increase in how much tax revenue is being collected. But after a point, it will fall down. This is tax rate. This is tax revenue. This is Laffer curve. A similar curve happens in debt overhang problem or debt and what is the development, XYZ development the country is happening or repayment capacity of the country. If a country is taking so small left, it can easily repay that. There is no debt overhang issue. But the country take debt beyond a limit, it becomes unsustainable. This become unsustainable and beyond that, the country's ability to repay the XYZ debt falls. That is debt, external debt overhang problem. India is not having any such problem because most of our debt are internal debt. Even our ECBs is external commercial borrowing these are highly highly limited why limited why our ecbs are very limited 
now it is increased to 1.5 billion so one company can only take one year ecb as external commercial borrowing as 1.5 billion why why some limit is kept on this there is no limit kept on how much you can convert the currency for doing the trade that's why we call indian currency as fully current account con current convertible but on capital account india is not fully convertible because there are certain limits if you are converting the currency for capital transactions external commercial borrowing means it is a type of loan taken by the xyz companies and all so that is a capital account transaction and there are limits quantitative limits for this go ahead what is sterilization not too much relevant in the current times because what happen if there is excess money supply has been occurred when RBI brought the dollars. Excess money supply in the economy, what RBI does? Give the dollars and take back the money. That exercise process is called sterilization. It's a part of open market operations like government securities there uh, and they are taking out the money to control the money supply. What RBI is doing right now? Right now our problem is not excess dollar, right now our problem is lack of dollar. Like we discussed before, dollar is leaving the country. Dollar is there, our problem is dollar leaving the country. So dollar is, there is lack of dollar, that's why this appreciating all this is happening. So what RBI is doing to like if dollar is this is completely left to the market rupee will fall into 100 rupees or 90 rupees and that if rupee is falling beyond a limit even though our exports become competitive but it can our imports become costlier this can create so much of macroeconomic instability to control that rbi is controlling the fall of rupee now our, how rbi is controlling fall of the rupee rbi is supplying dollar into the market for RBI is applying dollar into the market, where the RBI is giving, putting this dollar from? From the forex reserves. That's why we see that our forex reserves was around 621 billion dollars in September 2021. Now it is fallen to 500 something billion dollars. 500 plus something billion dollars it has fallen. This fall happened because RBI is putting its dollars into the economy to support the fall of the rupee go ahead what is this muntel fleming trilemma simply it means one thing because if you look at the how a country should manage its macroeconomy three variable you cannot keep independent every country has to select two out of this and leave manage the other thing like capital account mobility exchange rate management or monetary autonomy out of these three only two of these variables you can keep it as open otherwise the other one you have to manage it this xyz trilemma which one you should manage that depends on the xyz nature of the country and this trilemma is called muntel fleming trilemma or it is also called there is another word for it impossible trinity Go ahead. India may kya seen hai? Which variables we are controlling? Free capital mobility we are not giving. That is being controlled. Monetary policy autonomy we have provided. Exchange rate management to good extent we have provided. Only at extreme cases RBI come and manage it. Otherwise our exchange rate is market domain, market determined. Go ahead. Forex reserves we already talked and only thing of importance of this slide is Forex reserve is falling right now. The reason we already talked and you need to keep on Forex reserve can be kept on all this. Foreign currency assets like dollar, pound, sterling and all this. Gold can be as DRs and reserve transfer position in IMF. That means how much percent India is having share and all this. So out of this, if you look at the US million dollars, 560 million dollars is there, 494 million dollars or 494 billion dollars are kept in foreign currency assets. Most of our forex reserves are sitting in 
US dollars out of this in US dollars is the most forex reserves we are kept in US dollars. Go ahead. Purchasing power parity. What is purchasing power parity? Yes, yes, yes. Like one rupee equal to one dollar equal to suppose eighty rupees. What is this? Nominal. nominal exchange rate. What determines nominal exchange rate? Market factors, market demand and supply. Demand and supply is determining what this rate is. Now this rate can direct does not convey XYZ competitiveness of the economy or the production capacity or production level of the economy. If that has to be assessed, you need to see how much a certain good in one economy, how much its price is in first economy and how much its price is in second economy. If suppose here we are taking a burger, suppose a burger cost in India 200 rupees. The same burger cost in USA four dollars. Same good. Then the purchasing power parity of India is one dollar equal to how much rupees? Fifty rupees. So this calculation is made based on taking a common good, and this calculation, this figure is called purchasing power parity. Now tell me what happens if inflation in India is much higher than US. What happened to purchasing power parity? Inflation in India higher means this dollar, this price, pele 200 rupees ko ek burger mil raha tha, abhi 250 ho gaya. 250 ho gaya means what happened to 250 by 4? How much it comes? 62, 62.5 will be price of purchasing power parity. If inflation is having, have more inflation is having in India means the purchasing power parity of India or the convert run, conversion rate increases or rupee, you can say rupee depreciates if there is higher inflation in India compared to the other country. Same concept you can see in nominal and it's so very important here to understand four variables. What are these four variables? One is nominal exchange rate. One is nominal exchange rate. Then there is real exchange rate. Then there are two other indices. Which are they? Nominal effective exchange rate and real effective exchange rate. What is nominal exchange rate? This is what we exactly told now, like one dollar is equal to 80 rupees. This is nominal exchange rate. Now, if this XYZ figure there is adjusted to inflation, then we will get real exchange rate. No confusion, all good. It's very important to understand this, then only you can go into the concepts of near and read. And if whatever preconceived notions you have about your near and read request to forget it see that with a fresh mind then only there is it's going to be helpful now what is nominal effective exchange rate this is first thing you have to understand is it is an index it is not exactly an in exchange rate it is an index it is weighted value average of currencies to a pool of other currencies like we will discuss this in when the equation is being discussed. Weight is depending on like different currencies is there. We are assigning weight to all of these currencies. Now, wow, the weights are determined by how much India is trading in that currency. If India is trading more in US dollars, India will assign more weight to US dollars. If India is trading more in US pound, you will assign more value to the pound. So, depending on the weightage or trade significance we are assigning different weight to the different currencies and we are finding whatever the near is. Similarly real exchange rate is same as near adjusted to 
inflation. Better measure of competitiveness, rear is considered to be a measure of competitiveness. If rear is higher rear means lower competitiveness because same goods has to be produced at a higher cost. Concept of rear come here like if rear is 90 in one country and rear is 100 in one country. Now for producing one same good, here it cost only 90 rupees and here it cost 100 rupees. So which economy is more competitive? Those country which have lesser rear is considered to be more competitive. Now try to understand the formula equation how rear is formed. Here only thing you need to know is rear and near all these data are released by in India's case it is released by RBI and this is a PDF from RBI methodology how RBI is calculating near and rear. We start with near how what is the formula for near that is given here that is geometric mean of E by EI all raised to WI. Now we are taking an ideal situation. Ideal situation means we are suppose India is trading only in US dollars. So weight is assigned, we are supposing it as 1. If India is trading like we put so much currencies and find the geometric mean. That is exactly near. Now we are assuming for our ease of understanding, we are assuming that we are as trading only in US dollars. So weight is 1. So our factors determinants E and EI. What is E? E is with 1 rupee. How much if you want to compare two currencies, there should be a common XYZ component. In when we are discussing PPP, that common component was burger. Here with 1 rupee, how much SDRs you can buy? What is EI? With one dollar, if dollar is the currency, how much SDRs you can buy? Now let's take a number, if with one rupee you can buy 10 SDRs. And if one dollar you can buy 100 SDR. What will be the value of near? Near will be how much SDR you can buy with one rupee? that is 10 divided by 100 that is 0 0.1 now we are assuming a situation near is increasing that is near becomes 0. Point, take 0 0.2 for is 0 0.2 means which variable has to change here we can buy more here we can buy more SDRs with rupee. That means currency has become profits. Currency has become profits. earlier this relation was 10. Now if you can buy 20 SDRs or if it become 0.2 we are assuming dollar is having same value then number of SDRs you can buy with a rupee become 20. Now with dollar you can buy only 100 only same. So the difference is 5. So what is happening to rupee? Rupee is appreciating if near is increasing. Understood? We can clear karo. Near equation is geometric mean of E by EI all raised to W. E is how many SDRs you can buy from 1 rupee. EI is how many SDRs you can buy with any other foreign currency. That may be if it is 1 dollar. If you can buy more SDRs with 1 rupee means rupee is appreciating. You are getting more XYZ goods with 1 rupee. It is when E is increasing, near increases because it is in the denominator, numerator. So near increasing means you are able to buy more goods with the same XYZ rupee which you are having. More goods means rupee is 
appreciating clear now what is rear that is nothing much important if you got the concept of rear that is all that matters rear ka equation hai same geometric mean of e by e i into p by p i all rest to w i here p by p i is price level in one country that is cpi in india pi will be cpi usa if we are comparing with dollars or any other country that you are doing so it simply rear adjusted to inflation that is rear so the main point you have to understand is even though we are comparing two currencies we are not comparing the direct exchange rate nominal exchange rate of those currency we are come can we are connecting it with a common commodity that is sdr and then we are putting in the formula and finding the xyz equations clear now answer the question first now it becomes I was speaking this only for the same time, whole time. An increase in nominal effective exchange rate indicates appreciation of rupee. What is NER? E by E I. Increase means E is increasing. E is increasing means number of SDRs you are getting with 1 rupee is increasing. If you are with 1 rupee, you are getting more goods means rupee is appreciating. Connection you can make out, then this is a correct statement. An increase in real exchange effective rate indicates improving trade competitor. It is ultra. Real ex effective exchange rate is an indicator of how much you have to spend to produce XYZ goods. If you have to spend more to produce same amount of goods, that means your competitiveness is low. So, this statement is incorrect. An increasing trend in domestic inflation relative to inflation in other countries likely to cause the increasing divergence between near and rear. Rear and near nominal real wherever you see the difference is inflation. So if inflation difference is too high means difference between nominal and real whatever it is GDP whatever the variable it is it is going to increase. Third statement absolutely correct. So what is the answer? C is the correct option 1 and 3 only. Go ahead. Currency convertibility we al already discussed. What is the core idea? If a currency can be converted into all other different currencies like US dollar, yuan, pound, all this. If it can be converted into other country currency easily, we call it this currency is convertible. Indian currencies, there are two types of current account convertibility and capital account convertibility. Capital, current for current transaction purposes, if rupee without any limits can be changed into any of these currencies. For trade purposes, Indian rupee can be changed to any of the currencies without any limits. So that's why we call it Indian rupee as current account convertibility is there. But capital account convertibility is not there. For capital purposes, there are quantitative limits. Like for ECBs, we told that there is a limit of 1.5 billion. Only 1.5 billion you can take to India. For government securities investment, there is 5% limit. Only that much you can invest. So different different limits are there. So that's why we call it as Indian rupee, not capital account convertibility. There is government committee called Tarapur committee. Why this com purpose of the committee was checking whether India should go for complete capital account convertibility. Why India is not going for complete capital account convertibility? Security is not the issues like mac micro. Current economy will become more dependent on hot money. So many hot money will flow into this economy and hot money's problem is whenever there is a slight increase or decrease in Fed rate, it will reverse. Now when reverse, it will create so much of macroeconomical instabilities. This happened with countries called as East Asian Triggers in late 1990s. They were enjoying a fifth, they were 
open like full current capital account convertibility due to this huge amount of investment dollars were coming into this economy and for a long time these countries were enjoying long phase of high growth and high incoming dollars but once there was some risk elements vulnerabilities these countries can fail that kind of news was in the air dollar left this country like anything and this lead to this east asian tiger crisis in late 1990s so this to avoid such kind of a situation indian is not fully capital account convertible while there is even here also there is for gold if you are buying gold there has been some rbi schemes introduced before but now this is also removed so now um, to a huge extent india has complete current account convertibility go ahead what is currency war don't look here what is currency war conceptually it become it is between us and china accepted next what china is doing actually there is you bit is between us and china and if there is no currency war or no ma currency manipulation this exchange rate should be decided by demand and supply and what china is doing us is saying china if demand and supply determines the rate 7 point something should be the fair value of whatever the convertibility of us dollar and chinese yuan but china is keeping it in 6.7 6.8 ranges why china is keeping it currency at lower range because when currency is having lower value exports become competitive even though for imports you have to give more price But but China is a country with huge amount of exports. It is much more than it is importing. It is exporting. So there is more exports for keeping a currency at lower level levels. China has huge advantages. To this per due to this purpose, the whole exercise, the currency war, currency manipulation, all these concepts. Now the global geopolitical situation is changing. Now there is talks of reverse currency war. Reverse currency war means. what india is doing little bit of not too much exact exactly what rbi is doing if demand and supply determines the conversion rate one dollar may be equal to maybe 90 95 rupees but rbi is supporting rupees so that the fall becomes only to 80s one dollar is only 80 82 rupees right now so rbi what is doing RBI is doing something to appreciate the rupee. We are keeping rupee at a higher value. So why we why we are doing this? Because India is having different objectives. We are a country with huge amount of imports. We want cheaper imports. That's why we are we are more happy to keep our rupee appreciated because our priority is imports. doing all this they are spending dollars from forex reserves into the economy and all this so imports our priority is imports not just india so many emerging countries are undergoing undertaking the same operations their priority is imports so they are up, keeping their current currency at a higher value so that their import becomes not too much costlier export competitiveness there is a cost they are paying for this <coughs> go ahead what is nostro vostro account this was in news in the context of india's trade with russia india banks are allowed to open this nostro and vostro account with for transaction with russia what exactly is this suppose a bank in india suppose icici bank that bank has opened an account in a, any other bank in us now if this account from indian perspective this is called nostro account from indian perspective this is an account opened in a foreign bank in foreign currency in us currency now if you look at the same account from us bank this is an account opened by a foreign bank in our bank in our domestic currency that account the same account if it is looking from here we call it as vostro account if it is looking from india's perspective we call it as nostro account okay at least remember the diagram rest i think you could make it up clear so 
same account it is basically it is depending on which bank perspective you are speaking it becomes it can be called nostra and vostra accounts go ahead so that's all from right now so we broadly covered all the xyz concepts in this external sector most areas where question come is either purchasing power parity or this exchange rate dynamics these are the broad areas which you should focus on and these forex reserves and all this how it impacts even for this prelims i will say this us fed impacts on india prepare that also because economic survey you will see throughout it is being mentioned so these are four areas you should focus much on this external sector rest all this factual data you can revise and go through multiple times so that at least if an extreme statement come you should be able to identify it. that's all for now thank you so much